Hi, I'm Trinity from trinityskitchen.com and today I'm delighted to bring you an especially delicious and highly nutritious, completely gluten-free, totally vegan, totally plant-based main meal. We're gonna take some sweet bell peppers and we're gonna make a delicious, delightful medley with ground seeds and beetroot and a few other special ingredients in there. It's gonna be simple, it's gonna be easy when you know how and you're gonna absolutely love this. So if you're not already into beetroots, now this is a really great way to use them. Beetroots are absolutely loaded with antioxidants. They're full of so many beneficial nutrients, phytonutrients. They're really good at helping to detox the liver, helping the whole body detoxify itself. And they're, they've been shown to help increase stamina whilst helping to balance things out nicely. And I love using sweet peppers in my recipes. They are absolutely loaded with vitamin C seeds i'm going to use sunflower seeds in this recipe sunflower seeds are chock a block full of vitamin e and other essential fats that are really important for health and optimal wellness so let's go Okay, so the first thing we're going to do on our culinary adventure today is we're going to take about four beetroots, or a beet as you may know them as, and we're going to cut them up and we're going to bake them in the oven for about a half an hour ahead of time. So this is good to do while you're getting the rest of the ingredients ready. We're looking for about four beetroots, about the size of somewhere between a golf ball and a tennis ball. So I'm just chopping off any tough ends, slice through the middle and then slice them up nice and thin and then I'm just going to toss them onto a, a baking tray and then pop them in the oven for about half an hour just to make them nice and soft. We're going to take about 175 grams, which is about one and a half cups of sunflower seeds. Now I'm going to grind these down in a nut milk, if you have a food processor or a higher powered blender, you can do the same. You want to grind them down so that they are like a bit of a meal. Not quite like flour, it's okay if they're a little bit chunky. You want at least half of it to be nice and soft and mealy. Okay, so now we have our nice seed meal. We want to add about a teaspoon of Celtic sea salt. You want a couple of really nice, good, big cloves of garlic. And we're gonna chop off the ends, smash them. And then we're just gonna finely chop them. Or you can alternatively use a garlic crusher if you're more comfortable with that. I actually find it more fun to chop it. We're gonna take one small red onion And then finally chop it. Just chop it as small as you can. Just do your best. And I've got this lush bunch of coriander, also known as cilantro in the US. And I'm gonna take a nice big handful of this and I'm just gonna finally chop it. And we're gonna pop that in. Of course you can use other herbs if you want to, if you have other favorite herbs. I just have to have a whole load of coriander leaves that need using up right now. And I'm a big fan of just looking in my fridge, looking on my bench on my counter, seeing what's available and then making up my meals from that. I'm gonna mix it all in together. have some absolutely delicious looking 
red and yellow peppers that I brought from my health food store today. They're nice, they're organic. So slice them right down the middle. Cut out the white and the seeds. Don't have to be too perfect with it. Okay, so my beetroots are just about done. They've been in the oven for about half an hour on gas mark six. It's quite a high-ish temperature. And you've noticed I have an apron on. Beetroots and white clothing don't really go well together. And when I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna blend this beetroot now. If you have a Vitamix or any kind of blender, you can just pop them in the blender. I'm gonna use a hand blender, nice and easy. I don't want that beetroot splashing back and giving my um, clothes a nice pink tint. All right, and nice and smoking. So these are just about perfect. I'm gonna put them in a, a blending jug and I'm gonna blend them up with a hand blender. The thing is, you really don't need to invest in expensive equipment to do pretty much most of what I am doing here. So a minute or two, and you're there. I'm going to take my mixture that I prepared earlier and then I'm going to just gently tip all of this in here and then I'm going to mix it in thoroughly using the back of my spoon and the moisture of the beetroot is really going to act like a little magic here because that is going to help combine all the ingredients together. Smell the flavors really starting to combine and this is actually quite a simple recipe You know you can vary it many different ways, but I don't want to make it too complicated when I'm showing how to do a recipe because the idea is it inspires you to then go and create your own culinary delights Now I like to add a little bit of coconut cream to mine it's actually perfectly fine without it, but I'm a big coconut fan, so I just can't resist putting a little bit in there. If you don't have coconut cream, just miss it out and you will absolutely love this without it. So we're going to divide this evenly between two big or several small large peppers that have been chopped in half. So any that you've got left over, just roll into a bowl or a patty. Now it could get a little bit messy, especially if you've put the coconut cream in there. That's so much fun working with beetroot. Let's pop this in the oven. So I'm gonna let this cook in a preheated oven. About gas mark six, maybe gas mark five. That's about 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 200 degrees Celsius. Just pop it in about 25 minutes. Okay, so they've been in the oven for about 25 minutes. Gas mark six, 200 degrees Celsius, 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Approximately, there's a lot of give and take in this recipe. So let's go see how they are. Baking time depends on the size and thickness of the peppers. Usually 25 minutes to half an hour is good, but make sure the peppers are soft and almost weeping. That's essential to bring out their flavor and make them nice and easy to chop. Just make sure that they are cooked all the way through. And one of these little nice bite size. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh my goodness. That is so delicious. This dish really comes into its own with a sauce. So go check out the link below for my coriander and ginger coconut sauce recipe or just use one of your own. My name's Trinity. Thanks for tuning in. Come visit my website, www.trinityskitchen.com. If you like what you see here, keep tuning in, subscribe to my YouTube channel, leave a comment, let me know how you get on, and I'll see you soon.